Hello guys, welcome back to uh, the Forge Modern Tutorial series with uh, me, Swordcorn, of the Revolution. Um, last time we went through setting up our uh, basic uh, classes and I realised watching the video back after editing I made a bit of a mistake. Um, this code here won't call. <laughs> um, even though it's not calling any errors, that won't call because I called the package wrong. I spelled the tutorial wrong. Yeah, that was... yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to quick, quickly fix that before we get going today. So I'll probably end up... I probably edited the um, majority of that out. Basically all I've done is I've renamed the folder and I updated all the references. So the package is now all sitting in here. So that will now all call properly. I think it's time for our first test of the code, I believe. So we have that... Okay, let's give it a try. Because I, I realise that's the one thing we didn't do in the last episode. We didn't actually test this code to see if it was going to work. So we'll test it now. Okay, we had a crash. What was the problem? Attempted to load a proxy. The types don't match. Attempted to load a proxy type com.youtube.tutorialmod.client proxy into com.youtube.tutorialmod.tutorialmod. Oh, it's being weird. Sorry about this, guys. This is more of a bug fixing t episode, I know, but. Uh, it was definitely worth testing our code, because obviously if you'd tried to run this code after the last episode, you would have found it wasn't working. So now I've noticed it, we can work on it together. It should be fine now. But as long as the proxy loads, then we've solved the problem. Hmm. I did it again. Okay guys, so um, I probably caught a lot of that out because it was just mainly me faffing about there. Um, but basically uh, there was something I forgot to add into the code. So first of all we need to create an instance of our mod. So we just added this code in here. Simply at instance, bracket, open brackets, mod ID. So obviously we're using our string. Public static tutorial mod, instance. That's it. That's all we need to do. And um, I realised what the problem was from looking through my code for my other um, mod. I put this public void in it in the client proxy. It doesn't go in the client proxy. <laughs> uh, we need to put that actually. We need to put that in here. Oop, why have you done that? Back up there. Why have you done that? Put it back down here. Sorry. Just uh, yeah. Sorry. So these need to go in here. Okay. Let me save that. Save that. To change. And everything now should be fine. Yep. Make that easier for me. Put these in the order. I want to have them. That's better. Okay, so let's try running this again now that we've. Uh, I think we've solved our problem. So if you are having troubles, just make sure you move the public void in it into the common proxy. Uh, add this instance in uh, just in case, you know, and make sure you still have your proxy dot in it in initialization. And let's see what happens if we run this now. So I'll give it a minute to load. Keep an eye on the console. And no, it didn't work. Why? What's happening now? Still the same problem. Hmm. See, this is always a problem when you're trying to do something which it doesn't tell you is actually causing a problem. Because normally if you get an error here, then you sort of know where the problem is. But when this kind of thing happens, you can be stuck for a while. Um, it's trying to inject the client proxy. Tutorial mod proxy. Okay guys, after a couple of seconds of looking I noticed we've imported the wrong common proxy. So we need to actually change this import. So let's delete that import there. Which will mess this up. That's the proxy we need to initialize. So let's save that and let's try running it now. <coughs> try running it now. This is actually calling the common proxy from my other mod and trying to call it in here. 
which of course isn't going to work, so we need to force it to call its own common proxy. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Now, you guys probably won't have had that problem, but um, it just in case, <coughs> in case you do have multiple mods, sorry, excuse me, in case you do have multiple mods that use client and common proxies, just make sure you are importing the ones which uh, are yeah, relative to your mod. So I have a world here, let's go into code testing. Let's bring this up. Okay, so here we are, this is my little code testing world. This is uh, testing, obviously I'm a lot further a lot further on in my own mod than I am in the one that we're working on together. So I'm going to find an area to work in. Uh, if the game is lagging about a bit, I apologise, Bandicam isn't really great for capturing Minecraft. But it's easier than having two to capture, to, to capturing software running at once. And I think we'll work, yeah, we'll work just up here on top of this mountain, I think, for now. There we are. So, as you can see, we have our uh, creative tab there, that's initialized properly, item group dot tutorial mod tab. And there, uh, we have nothing. But we have nothing because we haven't registered it, I believe. Yes, we never registered our block. So that's actually fine, we have nothing in there showing up. But whilst I've got this up, I sort of want to show the eventual goal of this this uh, tutorial series. So here we are. This is a tile the ultimate cable block underscore basic dot name. This is uh, one I'm working on for my own mod. And if I put that down, you'll see that renders has its own block bounds. Doesn't mess around, and if we connect them together, it automatically updates the connections on either side. And if we make one long line, it doesn't render the centre of every cable all the way along. And if we branch out, it will render connectors. There we go. This is the goal of what I'm trying to show you guys. So this will be the eventual goal. Now also, um, I have different tiers. These are the different tiers. So, obviously you can rinse and repeat this code as many times as you need to use it. And you can make ultimate, if you can make different versions, if that's what you so desire. Now I am actually, <laughs> I'm actually having a problem testing my own code, because I'm trying to actually use this to transport some form of energy. So I have set these two blocks, I have one block gen, one block rec. This is to generate power, and this is to receive the power. Now if I connect this to ultimate cable, there we are. And where's my console? I've got it set out. I've got it set up at the moment to output. It's saying no. So uh, yeah, that's actually working fine because I've set it up to send out the message no, when the receiver receives energy through the packets. So that's working fine. So let's delete these cables. Oops. <laughs> bit hard to hit, they've got a smaller hitbox. And let's try this with the basic cables, because it's the basic cables I'm having trouble with. Now if I scroll down... Wait a minute, did it actually work? Hang on, let me just move this down. I need to be able to see the console. Break and replace. No, it's not working. Okay. So this is the problem I'm facing at the moment. My basic cables can't handle the voltage. But anything above basic, as you can see, transfers power perfectly fine. Pings both the server and the client, and updates. But, it, but the way it works is it actually stores energy throughout the line. So if I start charging it up, and then break this block connected to the generator, you notice it carried on for just a couple of seconds afterwards, and drained out what was in the cables, which is pretty useful. Now if I use these cables here, Bang. These can actually carry a higher voltage, so if I leave these for a minute just to charge up properly, then break this one, you'll notice it takes a lot longer for it to drain its power out. And there, uh, it stopped draining. These cables can carry 10,000. Uh, these cables can carry uh, 1,000, which is what this is outputting. These basic cables can only carry 100. I think that's why it can't 
handle the voltage so the cables just aren't transferring it um, but I'm trying to make, set it up so these will be able to transfer it regardless but it'll just switch the voltage down that's what I'm working on at the moment and then we have these which can carry 100,000 voltage so these charge up even more I'll show you what I mean in terms of how long it takes to actually drain the power out of the cables once they've been put into a network. So let's fill these powers up with cable fill these cables up with power. It'll take even longer than the other cables. And then we can break this cable. You notice it takes a very long time to drain the power out of these cables because these cables can carry so much that it's just now having to empty all of your cables out one at a time into this block. I believe the way it works is every time a section gets starts to drain, it starts draining from its neighbour, which is draining from its neighbour and draining from its neighbour. So all the power that's on the end here is being fed directly back through the wires until it gets fed into the block. And eventually, of course, we'll run out of power in the lines, which will stop powering the machine. We'll see that happen momentarily. I say momentarily. Like I say, these things can carry an insane amount of power. So it might take a moment. Come on. There we go. It finally stopped. <laughs> so you can see just how powerful this can be. But of course, this is um, where I'm at with my own mod. So the basic goals that we're going to go for is everything you see in front of you here. So we'll get the bounding box, we'll get uh, the textures to be drawn properly, and eventually we'll sort out connectors so they all connect in a row. And then after that, we'll sort out hiding the connectors when it's on a continuous run like so and these can actually be laid out infinite directions and it will always draw on a straight line so that would be the goal the overall goals and of course as I once I've finished uh, book testing my own code so I can make it work we will actually start working on a power system uh, for ours as well if that's what you guys want to see, because obviously I can't teach you how to do that until I've sort of worked out the bugs in my own system. So we'll have to come back to that when I've sorted my own problems out first. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go back into here. I'm going to get rid of everything that was related to my other mod, because we're not using it. That should be everything. Yes, it is. And we're going to, first of all, before I forget, we are going to go ahead and game registry dot register register block and the block we want to register is block cable block cable should be right yeah that's right and then we give it an unlocalized name so let's just call it block cable doesn't really matter and there we go Okay, let's just, uh, now that's registered, let's relaunch Minecraft, save our changes, and we'll see whether that shows up. So of course we're throwing no errors at the moment, which is always good to see. Let's move through to the initialization, we're on. Okay, so let's see whether that's actually registered our block. So if we go into our creative tab, there it is, there's our block. Let me just clear my hotbar. And there we go, that's our block cable. So we'll place this down, and there it goes. This is the start. This is, this is the basics. This is just the block as it stands in the world. So moving on to what we want to do today, now that we have this block registered and in world and we can see it, we need to start defining some parameters to make it work the way we want to. And to do that, we're going to start with defining how the block sort of renders. Okay, so to do that, we're going to go into here, in a couple of spaces, and we need four parameters to, de to define. So I already have them, or I've uh, borrowed them from my other mod and there they are just like that. So first we need to do an integer and get the render type, so we're going to return minus one. Okay? And then we need to do public boolean is opaque cube, and we need to return false because that will mean it's not um, 
it's basically it's got no textures you can be seen through and then we need to do render as normal block false as well and we also need to change on block added because when we put it on the ground we don't want it to be our block we want it to be our tile entity so we do so we need to do public void on block added world define as world integer x integer y integer z and uh, these define the coordinates of the block and then this so we do world dot set tile entity at coordinates x coordinates y coordinates z and we need to do this dot create new tile entity world and then world dot get block metadata x y z and then yeah that's it uh, <laughs> and basically that should if, if you are getting any errors with anything like this just make sure you've got your imports sorted first if you're still getting errors just double check that you've written things correctly but now we've done that we can have a quick test of that so let's save our work we can I'll leave that up for now and we can run that fingers crossed this will load <laughs> and I recommend testing the code as often as you can because if obviously you go ahead and write absolutely everything out and then you come to test it and nothing's happening you need to trace back through all of your code and it can be it can take a really long time as you can see our block does now doesn't render as a block in our hotbar it renders as a tile and when we place it in the, in the world it's there it exists it has mass but you can't see it it's invisible oh ooh, fancy very fancy so now we have our invisible block and it's within this block space that we want to start working it's a very nice block it's still, it was a very nice block it was very nice I don't know why but I like it when blocks uh, um, I like it when blocks just aren't there <laughs> it looks nice for some reason but something I want to do very basic very basically just to sort of like give you some things to sort of work on obviously now this this is in, in essence is just a basic block because it doesn't do anything it doesn't hold any data and the reason it doesn't hold any data is of course we haven't defined any data for it in here and <laughs> this is where things will start to get really really complicated guys so um, <laughs> I am actually going to have to reference my other, my other mod just to help me with this because it was so crazy what I had to actually do now as you see there's a lot of code in here and we will be going through this one bit at a time make sure you can understand everything make sure we're all okay so this is what we need to put in our tile entity class so let's get started with this let's go back into our tile entity cable and the first thing I want to do is just define that's some directions that we're going to be using and I actually want that, that that's better so the directions that we need are up down north south east and west and these are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 respectively because we're going to be binding them to an array of six digits Some, like I've done in here so first of all we need to do public forge direction open an array equals new let me have a quick look in here to make sure I'm writing things right I've missed something sorry <laughs> this needs to be defined for the connections so connections equals new forge direction and in here we need to define six directions close that off make sure I've put forge that should be our import forge direction yep that works beautifully now this uh, last receive direction and energy node these are specific to an energy system as it's this as are these methods here can connect get max render distance squared yeah these are all connected these are all basically connected to the 
the power system basically. So what we need is public void update connections. That's the next method we need to create. And that can go below our constructor. So let's get started with this. We need to do public void update connections. And let's open that up. That shouldn't throw any errors. It does not. Fantastic. And now, oh Jesus, <laughs> um, this is something we may need to come back to later actually. Um, yeah, I think we need to come back to this later on. We need to actually create our new class. Minimize, minimize these. Just keep that one open for now. And that's something I'm going to need to re refer to. So I'll have that open. And here, new class tile entity render cable. Finish. Okay. Let's open this up the way I prefer it to look. I mean, to do extends tile entity entity special renderer. And let's import that and add some unimplemented methods. There we go. So we've got the first one we get is render tile entity. And it's in here we need to do most of our work. It's going to be quite complicated. But first of all, we just need to define the parameters. So let's just tidy this up a bit so it's a bit easier to read, first of all, like so. Right, so we need to define what tile entity means, so we'll just call it tile entity. We need to do a double, um, what were these? Right, okay, okay. So these are translation x. So basically this, these are the coordinates, so let's call it trans x, trans y trans z and we just need to define a float which we'll just define as f because we're not using a float at the moment I'll tell a lie we will be using a float but we, we've not defined it just yet so we'll come back to that in a moment because that's really for actually when do we call that ok no we don't need to call that for quite a while yet that's fine so let's go back into here let's start doing our definitions. Now we're going to be using GL11 first of all. So let's do GL11 dot GL translated X, what? translation X, translation Y, translation Z. And we need to disable the lighting as well if we're going to be rendering in this way. So gl11 dot gl. Uh, which one was it? Oh, I need to do gl disable. gl disable. And we need to do gl11 dot gl underscore lighting. Like so. Close that off. That should work. Yes, it does. Now this is for binding the texture, which we haven't made yet, but uh, we will be doing. And um, this is something we'll need to do much later on. But for the time being, all we really need are... Yeah. Okay, okay, I understand. So, if I just define a couple of extra... So, we need the, so we've disabled the lighting, and that's used for rendering. And then we need to gl11 dot gl enable. So we need to turn our writing, lighting back on. 11 dot gl underscore lighting. So we need to reactivate the lighting. And now translations x, translations y, and translation z. What that will do is when we call this, it will... Um, when it renders the tile entity in which we put in the world, it will basically tell it to move into that block at the coordinates specified. But if we then want to 
render something else and make something else in the world. We need to move it back, basically, to where the player is so it renders properly in relation in relation to the player. So to do that we simply do gl11 dot gl translated open that up and literally all we need to do is redefine these as what we need translation y translation z but we just move back by negative like so and that will sort that out so what else do I want to do today so we've just started defining our renderer but of course it's not going to do anything yet so in here let's do this dot Oop. This dot bind texture to texture. What did I do? Yep, yeah. texture cable Oop. cable. Save that. Now we need to define what texture cable is. So we're just going to quickly do that. Wait, why is it overriding? Don't want you to override. It's just going to be a void, so let's delete the overriding. Let's do resource location. Yep, I need to do texture cable equals new. Yep, new resource location dot. No, oh, no, sorry, brackets. Then we need to do what is it? Yep. Yeah. We need to do tu tutorial mod dot mod ID. And then we need to just define where that's going to be. And that will be in textures forward slash cable forward slash cable dot png that's what we need to call there. Now we just need to import resource location to tell our code what that means. And then we can save that. You notice it calls no errors. And I think the last thing we'll do for today is we will just call upon all of this. So let's go into here so I can figure out what I need to do. I believe it's in a common. Nope, that's in the client. Wait, no, we need to do both, don't we? So we need to register tile cable in both of these. So let's put that in in the common and in the client. The client will have more um, client will have more to say about this, but for the time being that's all we need. So let's open our other client proxy. And here it is. This is the code we need. So we go back into our client proxy, we need to do client registry dot binds tile entity special renderer and we need to define the class so we need a tile entity cable dot class uh, just a quick look yep that's fine and then we just need to define it as a new tile entity render cable to our imports what did I call it? Talency render cable, my mistake Talency render cable to our imports oh yeah, sorry <laughs> like that, save that now we go back into our main mod class and in the initialization stage we need to put Proxy dot register tile cable. Save that. And that'll be everything for today so far. So the last thing I want to do for today is just quickly test our code, save all the changes, and let's just make sure everything we've done is working before we jump any further ahead. In the next episode we will be working on a texture that we can use for our cables. So we can start working more of our GL11 translations and everything like that. But for the time being, let's just make sure that everything we're using works. There we are, we're in the world, it's placing down. Okay, and it threw an error. 
So what was our error? Okay, the only error it found is it couldn't find the file it's been asked to load. But that means we've called that properly, it means it's searching for the textures, which is absolutely fine by me. So, that's everything for today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, post a comment and I will see what I can do for you to help you out. As you can see, um, I'm still not 100% up on this myself, I'm still learning. I'm still very much trying to learn and making sure everything works. So, But basically, you just need to be very aware of all your imports, make sure your imports are always correct, make sure you're not receiving any errors down this side, and make sure you stop and you test at every possible stage, just to make sure nothing's going wrong. So obviously we have... oh hang on, that's the wrong class. That's the wrong mod. That's the other client, that's the other common. So basically, yeah. So what we what we achieved today is we registered our block, so our block actually turns up in the game. And then we registered the tile cable in the, in the special renderer in our client proxy. Which extends the common proxy, so we only need to be put, placed in here. In a block cable, we defined the renderer type, so it renders a, a blank cube, and we told it to set that as a world as a tile entity when it's placed in the world. We started to define the connections, so the size needed for the connection. So when we get to that point, they're defined, and we have started. We have the basics of starting to update our connections, but of course they're not rendered yet, so we need to work on that. And we've started to define what our cables will look like. And we've sort of started to get into a little bit of GL11 to try and help us do that. So in the next episode, I think we'll be designing our texture and making sure we can call that properly. And then we'll start working on some of the meteor things. But in the meantime, if you did like this episode, then give it a like. And we'll see you all next time.